Hiya folks, how are we going? Today I was really fortunate to have been sent a game to review. I really appreciate being sent copies of games to review. I'm not the wealthiest person so it does really help me to be able to read some games without having to spend a lot of money. That being said, though I was sent a copy by the creator, I promise that today's review is going to be unbiased. Also, I might struggle every so often to hold up the book. I fell at work about two weeks ago and we thought it was healing okay, but um, turns out my hand needs surgery in the next week or so. I'm hoping to record a few videos today, so there's something for you guys to watch, but I'll keep you posted if there's any pauses. Anyway, the game we are talking about today combines fantasy elements, mapping, and exploration. This is is Expedition Incredizoology by Imagined Chaos and Idea Monger Games. The world for this setting is sort of parallel to ours. Anywhere around the globe can be found entrances to a place called the Wilds, a diverse and interesting landscape filled with strange and unusual creatures. In fact, at the beginning of the game, the person running the game will actually create the kind of environment that the players will be playing in. If this sounds a little daunting, don't worry. You can roll up the biome that your players can explore entirely from tables. The rough time period of inspiration for this game is kind of Victorian era-esque. The wilds as a place seem to sort of somewhat be inspired with elements of Celtic mythology, but I found I was hoping for a bit more detail here and there. I do wish I knew a bit more about the wilds in general. For example, the game states that some people have chosen to move, live, and economically function in the wilds. This makes me wonder, do the wilds have access to resources that can't be found in our world? The places and the shops mentioned seem to mostly be based on that United Kingdom flavour, but I wonder what makes the wilds themselves appealing. Considering how much the wilds have fantastical elements, I wonder what different things could be found in the shops and houses that in the wilds, and what communities that might differ from ours. I'm also a little troubled by the game's setting and background. This game is set around 19th century explorers, generally western, and while aesthetics like safari suits and tinned meats are really entirely there's a troubling colonialist aspect to this aesthetic. Generally, in the 19th century, these explorers didn't view the places that they went to with much respect to either their indigenous habitants or the animals and plants that lived within them. The game also has potential adventures where you might be game hunting. While this is also balanced out with potential for adventures of preservation and outreach, I think in general it would have helped to expand the world to move away from some of the more troubling aspects of its aesthetic roots. I think it's entirely possible to play a game based on 19th century exploration without its colonialist attitudes. I think it just would have required a little bit more, I think it just would have required a little bit more consideration or writing. I genuinely believe that the game and its creators do not endorse the colonialist attitude of 19th century explorers. I just think not discussing it in game just leaves it a little bit ambiguous and over open for someone to misinterpret. I also think including a discussion of the history of exploration and people's attitude towards foreign places would be a really interesting one and would create some more interesting gameplay opportunities. In this game, you use six out of the standard seven polyhedral die sets. The D100 is left out. Generally speaking, the better you are at a skill, the higher the die you will roll the better number outcome you will have. The exception to this is the skill of noise. Generally, the better you are at not making noise, the lower your die roll is. This is important, say, if you are out exploring the map that you are in and you come across a wild animal. You perhaps don't want to disturb it. Generally, the skills that you'll be rolling for are strength, agility, stamina, finesse, vision and charm. 
These are a little bit different from some of the scores that you might have heard of in my review of Cathanum or that you might be familiar with with Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. As this is a game that's about exploration and particularly exploration of a map, the skills are a bit more geared towards that. For example, vision is going to be very important to explore a map and say recognize landmarks you've seen before or realizing when you've gotten a bit lost. There are also no classes in this game. Instead, there are skill trees. I think this is a really interesting choice that encourages players not to just stick with what their characters started out with, but to encourage them to branch out into different areas. Of course, if you wanted, you could just complete a skill tree, but perhaps something else on another skill tree intrigues you. So you have to take a few, say, levels in that skill to reach that particular ability. In particular, I like that the skill trees have different branches. One of the ones I really like is the navigator where you can branch off into something more orienteering or tracking or cartography. I think using a skill tree allows people to both specialize and become a jack of all trades without much mechanical detriment. There's also a selection of abilities that you can choose when creating your character. These generally help out with your actions or will buff a skill in some way. There's also an option to forgo some or all of these skills at character creation for a bit more help. Another mechanic that I find really interesting is as the game progresses, your character and the party can gain a reputation. This can be a good or bad reputation and it can even relate to a party's moral code. Some actions in this game will initiate what is called a moment. Generally, these moments cover something more adrenaline fueled, like encountering a hostile entity. In a moment, a player has a variety of options, such as use an ability, use a trap, use a skill, use a ranged weapon, swap a weapon, reload a weapon, move away, use magic, and use a melee weapon. I was running out of fingers to count there. Dang cast. These actions are represented on a set of cards. And when a moment begins, generally the entity controlled by the game master goes first, and then all the players simultaneously flip their cards to reveal what they want to do. If someone happens to want to do the same thing as another player, they can then collaborate on that action. Also, there's no leveling in this game. To improve on anything, characters actually have to actively work on their skills in game time. Generally speaking, the length of your campaign for this game is actually decided by the size of a grid. They recommend for a normal length game, a 10 by 10 grid. Though I'm not entirely sure what this game considers a normal length game, but it does go down to as small as as a 6x6 grid, so it sounds like this is a game that might be played over a couple of sessions at least. While there is also a larger map option up to 20x20, 20 20, I think if you wanted you could absolutely take the same characters and pop them down in a new biome that they found in the wilds with a fresh new map. This game employs a few cartography skills as your players travel through the map and mark up all the different things that they have seen. This game also has an inbuilt mechanic to sort of stop players from doing nothing for an entire session, and that is a clock. This clock is broken up into 16 segments, each one representing a rough time of day. Different actions require a different number of segments on the clock. For example, preparing a meal only takes like one segment, but for something like taming an animal, it actually takes three segments. Overall, I think the mechanics are a lot of fun. There's a variety of flavor and interest to them to appeal to a wider group of players. I will say, if you have a group that's looking for a mechanic that involves social interactions, that's not present here. I know this game will really appeal to a couple of people I know who are really hungering for an exploration style game where they have to get through a map. For a hardcover book, this is a pretty concise game manual. It's under 200 pages. I really like the artwork approach as well. It sort of has a mixed medium vibe with pictures that look like they would be straight out of a botanical illustrated guide to 
to to Victorian ink printing. Overall, I am very grateful to have been sent a copy of this game. I can absolutely see it going into my gaming tables rotation. I also think it's got a few interesting and unique concepts to explore, as well as something a little bit different for skills and mechanics. I personally wish there was a little bit more lore to this world. There's a few tidbits that have me extremely intrigued. I think even if this game isn't for your group, it's definitely got some elements that I think are worth perusing. Well, that's all for today. I'm going to be recording a few videos with this on, but hopefully by the time this is uploaded, I will have already gone into surgery to fix my wrecked hand. Wish me luck! And I hope to see you all next time at the gaming table. Bye!